Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64Academy.com, and today I want to talk about how I used On One Resize to make a gallery wrapped canvas print with MPEX. So you can see here's the print, and I'm going to show you how you can use On One Resize to make your gallery wrap borders without having to crop any of the picture. So let's go ahead and jump into Resize, got a lot of cool stuff to show you. All right, so here I am in Photoshop. Now you can access on one resize, whether in Photoshop or as a standalone product or through browse. I'm gonna use it right here in Photoshop because uh, that's how I typically work on my photographs. So I'm gonna open up the image that I have here to bring into on one resize. Now you can see here, it's very critical for me. I use my uh, guides here to make sure that my straight lines are straight. So if you uh, need to do that, press Command or Control R. Command or Control R will allow you to have rulers. And then you can make sure that your straight line in your image should be straight by bringing down that guide. And that'll just help you uh, make sure that the things are straight before you go to printing. Okay, so that's really important. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to automate and go to On One Resize. It's not going to be in your filters. It's going to be in automate. So once resize opens up here, you can see that I've already done some work here from the past, but I'm going to go over what on one resize does. So on the left hand side, you have all of your different presets that are already loaded right in here. You can go over to video and make this image the size of what a 1080 HD video would look like. It's going to give you crop parameters. So then you can just move this around and crop it accordingly. And now if we look at it like this, this would be the proper crop for a 1080 uh, HD video. So now I'm going to go back up here to where it says video and I'm going to go down to something where it says photo lab. Okay. So with photo lab, I want to select uh, the, let's say the 16 by 24. So I know that I'm going to be printing through MPEX and through MPEX, they have a 1.5 inch gallery wrap border that goes around the sides. It's a nice thick border that goes around the sides. So the image that I want here, uh, if I were to go 16 by 20, that's going to crop in, I'm going to lose the image as a whole. So we want to go based off of the aspect ratio of whatever image that you, you have or the closest possible to. Now, instead of uh, going into, let's say, MPEX and just resizing it in MPEX, I'm doing that here in On One Resize because it makes my life a lot easier so that you're going to see that once I'm done here in Resize, all I have to do is save it and upload it to MPEX and it's ready to go. I don't have to crop it. I don't have to do any setup. It's already ready to go. So you do that stuff on the front hand, so you don't have to worry about it on the back end. So I want to keep and maintain the aspect ratio of this image or as close as I possibly can get it. So I'm going to go down the list until I find the right crop size that will equate to that. If we go 16 by 20, you'll see here that we get a gray border on both sides because that's the area that will be cropped if we do this. Now, before you can access any of the uh, features or settings on the right hand side, you have to press enter so that it knows that you are dedicated to this crop. So on the right hand side, it's going to give you your pixel dimensions, what this image size is going to be. And then going down the list, you've got your width, your height and your resolution. Now for printing purposes, I would highly suggest a resolution that is uh, 200 to 300 uh, pixels you want to stay as close as you can to 300 pixels, but even at 200 pixels, you can still get a pretty good print. And that's how many pixels make up an inch in your photograph. So moving on down the list, we have our settings here. You can change these settings for the image type to make sure that, you know, if you want this to be a low res JPEG, let's say you wanted to save this for social media and you want it to be a low res JPEG, you'd select this and it would give you the proper settings here for a low res JPEG. I would also go over to your presets here and make sure that you selected web and email if you're going to use that low res JPEG. So for us, let's just go ahead and go with general purpose. So it's just general purpose settings here. And now we have our sharpening. The beauty of on one resize and the sharpening that's in here is that you can go pretty high on the sharpening, but then you can protect your highlights and protect your shadows from that sharpening. So only your midtones pretty much get that sharpened detail, which is, which is a very good thing to do for print. That way the whole image doesn't look overly, overly nasty. Now I wouldn't go that high when it comes to uh, output sharpening. I would maybe stay in the, in the low thirties uh, or something like that, and then protect your highlights and shadows as necessary so that those areas 
areas don't necessarily get sharpening. And the reason why you don't want to sharpen your shadows is because a lot of times your noise uh, will rest in your shadows. So you're basically just applying a sharpening to the noise. And when you sharpen noise, you're making noise more detailed and more prominent and making it more nasty. So if you do add the sharpening, I highly suggest moving over the shadow protection so that it doesn't affect your shadows at all. So you can add some film grain to this if you'd like. You just click the little radial dial here, how much film grain you want, if you want it to have that old school image type of feel. And then there's also tiling. Now tiling is a pretty interesting because let's say um, you wanted to make, let's say you had like a, a, a 40 by 30 image and it's huge. This would be a huge print and you wanted to break it down into uh, four by four tiles so that when you put it on the wall, you could put a little bit of a gap between each one of them. You could do that right here. You could change your si tile size to say four inches by four inches. And then you press choose here so that you can choose what folder you want to save these into. And it'll actually output save all of those four by four tiles into one folder. Pretty cool little tool there. So I'm going to unclick that tiling because what I want is right down here with gallery wrap. Now I've done some testing previously here with MPix's uploading system and the border that they choose. So MPix will tell you it does a 1.5 inch border around your gallery wrap, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need a 1.5 inch gallery wrap you actually are going to need a two inch gallery wrap. And now this doesn't matter if you're doing an eight by 10 image or a 16 by 20 image or even a 16 by 24. And I've actually saved output saved those already so that we can go ahead and run some tests on that when we do go over to MPEX so you can see that. So if you're gonna be doing this and you're gonna be putting this out to MPEX, make sure that you choose here that this is set to two, a thickness of two inches so that that has a border now where these guidelines are similar to the guides that we saw before when we were straightening our image in Photoshop, these guides are actually creating the warp for you. Now, the problem with gallery wraps on a regular photograph, and I'll show you this too, is if you just import your image and you want to save it as a 16 by 24, print it as a 16 by 24, it's going to make you uh, crop in on your photograph because MPEX, it's an automated system. So it just thinks, okay, you're giving me this, this is what you want to wrap. What we're doing here is we're output saving this as a 16 by 24 print with two inches extra on each side. And we get to dictate what extra is on the sides and on the bottom. So you can say right here, you want that to be reflected so that this paintbrush that's over here looks like it's reflected over there. You can say stretch so that it stretches those areas out. And you can also choose something like stretch soft, where it gives it a nice uh, kind of blur on top of that stretch. And then you have the reflect soft, like you see right here. You can also do something pretty interesting here, which is what I've done with our print. And I'll tell you at the end of this, kind of what I think about this. So you can add an overlay color to the border of your print. So let's say you wanted to add like a wash of color around this border. What you would do is you'd go into where it says overlay color here, and you could change the opacity. So now the overlay color that we're putting on the outside border is gonna have this grayish type of tone to it. On the image that we printed with MPEX here, I went ahead and went with a, a an opacity of about 50. But then I went into where it says overlay color and I clicked this color and I picked an on screen color. So I went pick screen color and I chose one of the bluish colors that's right here in this paintbrush. It was a darker blue right about here. And then I pressed OK so that the outside border would have this bluish color around the sides of it over top of the paintbrushes. So you can see the paintbrushes, but it also has this darkened border on the sides. I believe it was actually a little bit higher, probably around the 70% uh, opacity there. And here it says, do you want to add this to a new layer? So basically what will happen is when we go into Photoshop, it will output this border as a new layer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and press save. So when we output this to Photoshop, it's going to do all the resizing for us and turn that image into a 16 by 24 image, but also give us that two inch border that's going to go around the whole image. So you can see here, it outputs our layers for us. It says, here is your gallery wrap and here is your image. Now, if we see here, let's say we reflected that and we don't like the way this looks, we could just go right onto this gallery wrap layer and we could go to, uh, let's say our clone stamp tool. And we could make a big brush here with our clone stamp tool and just go ahead and grab this area here and just go ahead and paint out that paintbrush. So now we get to modify what our gallery wrap looks like. And this can be a pretty effective tool. Let's say you have a texture 
or something that you want to apply to that border or maybe a lace type of border to go around it if maybe it's a wedding photo and it's got this nice uh, I don't know vintage type of look to it you can add anything you want to this border by just pulling in another image and clipping masking it right inside of there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go to file and go to save as, and I'm going to save this as a JPEG. That's what I'm going to be uploading to MPEX. I'm going to call this 16 by 24 and then dash two. So I know that that's the two inch border and press save. And here's the MPIX website. So how do you get to the gallery wraps? Well, you go up here to wall art. There's a lot of stuff on here. I've been printing with MPIX for over six years. Every year I print my family's Christmas cards here. I print uh, any pictures I take of my kids to send off to my family. I print on aluminum here. I print on canvas here. I've been printing with MPIX for about six years now and I've never once been upset or frustrated at all by anything I've received from them as a product. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press canvas gallery wraps and they don't pay me to say this stuff. Okay. I just, that's how, how great I feel about uh, the stuff over at MPEX. So we're going to go over here to create gallery wrap. If you look down here, it says the gallery wrap around 1.5 inch wooden stretcher frame. So that's what I was talking about. That 1.5 inch wooden stretcher frame. The frame itself is 1.5 inches thick. That's why I made that two inch wrap to go around it. And I'll show you the difference here. So we'll go to create gallery wrap. And the first thing I want to do here in showing you how to create this gallery app, we're just going to choose the 16 by 24. And when I choose 16 by 24, the photo I'm going to choose, I'm just going to go right to my computer and add a photo here. I'm going to add this photo right here. So you can see what happens to our gallery wrap when we just choose a photo that actually doesn't have a border around it already. You see what's going to happen is it's going to take this 16 by 24 image that we have saved and it's going to add that border around it without giving us an extra uh, footing, so to speak. So what we have here is our image that's now been cropped in. So our wrap will cut off maybe a head if this is a, a wedding portrait or something like that. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to add my photos and I'm going to go to, uh, let's, let's first go with the 16 by 20 at 1.5 inches. So I want to show you something different here. So we'll select this 16 by 20 at 1.5 inches and I'm going to go to, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that I select the right size here. So I'm going to go to size here. I'm going to go to 16 by 20. And this was 16 by 20 at 1.5 inches. Cause the first thing I did was I said, okay, if they're going to put a 1.5 inch border around it, I'm going to make a 1.5 inch gallery wrap. Well, you can see right here that at that 1.5 inch gallery wrap, we're missing about a half an inch. So if I go back to my photo, I'm going to go to change my photo. I'm going to go to my computer and I will change that photo to the 16 by 20 at two inches. And now when we select that 16 by 20 at two inches, you see how we have that perfect border there. So we actually started this because we wanted the full image. We didn't want it cropped by that 16 by 20. These 16 by 20 examples I was just showing you so that you can understand that it's not a 1.5 inch wrap around that border. It's a two inch wrap around that border because they have to have a half an inch to compensate where they're actually going to wrap it around the stretcher and staple it. So let's go back and let's go to add our photos and we're going to add the 16 by 24 with two inches. Press OK. So hit that 16 by 24 and we're going to go ahead and close this out and we're going to make this that 16 by 24 image. So now that you see here, we have our wrap area, we have our image in the center and everything looks good. I don't have to have MPix do anything for me with their automated system because I've already done it in uh, Photoshop with on one resize. Now you can do this with anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be with these gallery wraps. Let's say you're going to print a 16 by 24 aluminum print and you want to make sure that you've got the right 16 by 24 crop and you want to do that and resize first then save it out and bring it over here it's all the same so from here all i have to do is add to cart and go ahead and process this and i'm ready to go so let's go ahead and take a look at what this print actually looks like after i've received it from mpix and have the physical product in my hand so you can see here's the finished product We've got that nice print that we started making in on one resize. We've got that extra excess that's on the sides. Got this nice thick gallery wrapped border on the sides. Now I like the dark look on the sides because it really helps pull the image forward. However, I think 
if I were to do it again, I probably would have had the stretch function on this one instead of the uh, solid color because you can kind of see there's a little bit of a seam here. It's only about an eighth of an inch where it's actually missing. But to me, you know, it's not their fault. It's just the, the matter of the print itself uh, and how that image translated onto the canvas itself. And it's really not that noticeable and not that much of a big de deal in the long run. However, it's one of those things that I'm kind of nitpicky about. So if printing on canvas is your thing, I highly suggest using MPEX. Always have beautiful products from them. And mix in on one resize with that. Take a look at that. See how, how that works. Because that, that gallery wrap border can be really tricky. Because if you don't do the gallery wrap border in Photoshop or on one resize like that, when you send it off to the printer, it's going to crop in some of your image to make that border around the sides. So my name is Blake Rudis again with F64academy.com. If you liked what you see, please like it, share it, comment on it, and definitely subscribe because I got new videos coming towards you every week. So be sure to follow me over on F64academy.com also. Go ahead and get your name in that email list because every Friday I put out an email telling you what new tutorials are coming out. So in case you missed it here on YouTube, you can catch it over there. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you.